This video illustrates the use of IGW to perform coupled surface water groundwater modeling. A river whose water level shows a sinusoidal variation is modeled. The response of an adjacent lake to this variation is also modeled. In addition to the river's variable water level, the lake has additional sources and sinks, such as input from precipitation, runoff, and a lake augmentation pumping well. Loss of water from the lake in the form of evaporation is also modeled. The lake's water level is determined by performing a simple mass balance for the lake, accounting for all sources and sinks, including groundwater fluxes flowing into and out, of, out from the lake. It is seen that the lake's water level also shows a sinusoidal variation in response to the nearby river. A mass balance chart for the lake, showing the temporal changes in various source and sinks terms, is displayed. Multiple com computational layers are used also in this example to illustrate the vertical groundwater dynamics around the lake. The steps to create the model are as follows. 1. Create the domain polygon across the entire workspace extent. Assign a constant hydraulic conductivity, top elevation, and aquifer thickness and attributes explore. Make sure to uncheck Use as starting head. 2. Create a polyline along the left edge of the model and assign it as a constant prescribed head. 3. Create a river polygon along the right edge of the model and assign it as a two-way head dependent flux in the Source and Sinks tab in Attributes Explorer. 4. Reassign the bottom elevation to negative 6 meter. 4. Discretize and run the model. Five, draw a cross section from the center of the modeling domain to the right edge of the domain. Note that the flow is essentially horizontal across the cross section. Six, create a lake polygon with the cross section cutting from left to right across the lake. Assign it as two-way head-dependent flux in the Source and Sinks tab. Reassign the lake stage of negative 0.5 meter and a bottom elevation of negative 5 meters. Seven, perform a shallow discretization and run the model. Note that the flow patterns have changed because of the presence of the lake. Eight. Add a pumping well to the left of the lake and assign a pumping rate of 250 cubic meters per day in Attributes Explorer. 9. Perform a shallow discretization and run the model. 10. Edit the well in Attributes Explorer. Uncheck Use Default Interval under Screen Interval to provide user assigned top and bottom screen elevations. 11. Deep discretize the model and run the model forward. 12. Select the River Polygon in Attributes Explorer. In the Head Dependent Flux sub tab, check the box next to Transient under Stage. Open the transient options by single clicking on the transient button. Uncheck random fluctuation, but leave periodic fluctuations enabled for the transient river data. Change the fluctuation period to 30 days and the amplitude to 5 meters, then click redraw to display the updated river stage data. Click edit and assign 0 meter for the trend data at 0 and 100 days. This leaves only the periodic fluctuations for the transient river stage data. Thirteen. Select the lake polygon in Attributes Explorer and check the From Coupled SWGW Modeling box under Stage in the Head Dependent Flux subtab to enable coupled modeling. Then open the Surface Water Dynamics window. Assign a positive value for QSW, which represents an addition of water to the lake from an external source. Click on the Precip EVT button to edit the other surface water source and sinks options. 
Add a constant runoff flow rate of 100 cubic meters per day, direct precipitation into the lake of 80 centimeters per year, and a constant evaporation rate from the lake of 30 centimeters per year. Snowmelt and outlet flow is not modeled as a source term or sink term in the lake mass balance in this example. Fourteen. Discretize the model. Fifteen. Open simulation time parameters and select a transient state model. Assign a time step of one day. Sixteen. Open the solver settings, go to the flow tab, and ensure that lakes is checked under coupling control. This allows lake levels to be updated by and used as feedback for the groundwater heads in the aquifer. Seventeen. Run the model forward. In the surface water window that appears for the lake, check the bar chart box to display a water balance for the lake. Note the complex, dynamic nature of the cross-section model, the surface water versus time plot, and the lake water budget as the model proceeds. Eighteen. Stop the model and open Attributes Explorer. With the lake still selected, check Zone Budget at the bottom of Attributes Explorer, then check Water Balance in the bottom left window of Attributes Explorer. Note that this shows the water balance for the groundwater cells within the lake polygon, not the lake itself. BDY stands for groundwater entering or leaving the area defined by the polygon through the lateral boundaries. BOT or BOT indicates groundwater that is leaving or entering the groundwater cells in the top or first computational layer. 19. Click on the Deep Discretization icon and add three computational layers to the conceptual layer. Then discretize the model. 20. Run the model and note the updated velocity vectors in the cross-section model. In particular, note the vertical groundwater flows in the vicinity of the lake.